once again I ask that you would use me to bring forth nothing but the truth of your word. As we look into your word tonight, I ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to guide me to bring forth nothing but your absolute truth. I pray, pray that every heart is open and receptive to your word, that they may grow in your grace, in your wisdom and knowledge, for we can do nothing against your word. I also pray, Lord Jesus, that even as your word perform itself, that people will glorify, praise, and honor you like they should. I pray that they will reverence you and the Father, giving unto you and the Father do high praise and worship, for you deserve it. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for keeping us. So we ask that you will feed us tonight, Jesus. In your name I pray and I thank you. Amen. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6 says this, For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right, so the Lord is telling us, the word is telling us that, um, We got to have faith to come to the Lord. And not any of us have enough faith. There's no human being on the earth that have enough faith at all. None. I don't care how much faith you think you got. You don't have enough. I don't have enough. Um. So tonight we're going to continue to talk about faith and how our faith can grow. Some people have more faith than others. And some people, a lot of people have no faith. But there's nobody on the face of this earth have enough faith. So you can never come to the place of thinking. Well, when you come to the place of thinking that you got enough faith, it's because you have no faith. That's why you think that way. What it is, it's your pride and arrogance that get you in a place. And what it does, it sets you up to be destroyed. So when trouble, trials, and tribulations come your way, you're going to fail because you thought you had enough faith so you don't take the steps to keep growing in faith. And that's where a lot of people mess up. And that's why when trials and tribulations come, people fail because they think they have enough faith. When a person thinks they have enough faith, they, have, they don't study the word like they should. They don't pray like they should. They don't listen to wise counsel like they should. Why? Because they think they already know. And that's the wisdom of man. And that's why the scripture says, do not trust in ourselves. Do not trust in our boat. That means our ability. And what people do, they tend to think, I got enough until they go through a trial and they get beat by that trial. And the reason why you get beat by that trial, because you didn't have enough faith. But you thought you did. And if you, if you step back and look at what you stopped doing, like studying, praying like you should, seeking the Lord, if you look back, you'll find out where you, the steps you took to make sure or to ensure that you fail. You don't have that hunger and thirst for the Lord like you should. You, why? Because you thought you were all right. 
So you, the devil saw he'll see our slackness and take advantage of it. And he, he wants you to say, I got strong faith. I got enough faith. He wants you to believe that. Matter of fact, he, he encourages you through your flesh to believe that you have enough faith. And the way he do it is this. You, instead of putting the kingdom first, you put what you want first. And the reason why you put what you want first is because your flesh, along with the promotion of the devil, convinced you that you don't need to do kingdom work or do what the word said first. You can get it later. So instead of studying and praying like you should, putting it first, meaning it should be the most important thing in your life, it be the last thing in your life. I'll do it when I get a chance. When I finish what I got to do, then I'll do that. And while you doing that, the devil is planning to set you up. Why? Because he knows that without faith, a person cannot please God. And that's what he does. Real faith causes you to hunger and thirst all the time for the word. So the scripture says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently, that, that word diligent means fervently all the time. I mean, you get going. Dil, diligent means you don't quit. You don't stop. You don't take a break. Why? Because you know that you don't have enough of it. So you keep going and keep going and keep going. People like that, they will endure all things. Why? Because the word in them drives them to a place to conquer because it's the word inside of a person that endures all things. Not the person. It ain't you. It's the word inside of you. There's no, I don't care what it is, nobody can endure nothing that the devil has without the word. Because it's the word that's inside of us. So that's what takes place. Now, I want you to go to the book of James. Chapter 5. Now, one of the main weapons the devil is using is this climate change where he got people thinking that what people doing, and uh, whoever's back there, it's going to be aired to next. The world and the wicked got people thinking that human beings have the ability to change or, or control the climate. That is a lie. That is a lie came straight from hell. And nowhere in the Bible does the Bible say man has the ability to control the weather. I don't care what you and I do, we cannot control the weather. If you burn a fire, it, smoke goes up. After a while, it disappears. But they, it's the devil that's driving this thing because the devil's job is to keep people in a place of delusion, and the way he do it is through deception and lies. And every last one of them, every scientist, every leader, every one of them you hear talk about climate change, they liars. They're not telling you the truth. I don't care whether they're on Fox or whoever, they're a bunch of liars. I don't, if they say that they're a child of God, they're still lying. They're still lying. I don't care who, if uh, all y'all preachers from that these folk run to that claim time, climate change is real, they are a bunch of liars. Because it's not real. Why? Because when you said that people have the ability to control the climate, you just took it out of God's hand. You just took it, and that is a, that is a lie, all right? Now, we're talking about faith. Now, in the book of James chapter 5, the scripture says this in verse 17. It said, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it was. 
and it rained not on the earth. And by the space of three years, and excuse me, in six months, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave up, and the earth brought forth a uh, fruit. All right, now, this is an example of climate change. But if you notice something here, Elijah didn't have to do it. He didn't have the power to do it. He had to ask. Can you understand that? He had to ask for it to be done. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Kings 17. He had to ask God for permission to do this. Now, I'm telling these are a bunch of, the purpose is to destroy people's faith. And that's why you all have a battle. Okay, those of you that don't want to, those of you part-time, that want part-time truth, you ain't going to make it anyway because your faith don't grow. You got to absolutely trust and believe in God's word because there's an assault against God's word. It ain't against uh, you and me primarily, even though it attacks us. It is against God's word. The purpose of the devil is to make God in Christ a liar because he lost. The purpose of the devil when it comes to us is to keep us in a place where we don't believe God's word with our whole heart. And that means it don't work in us. Why? Because we don't believe it with our whole heart. All right? Now, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, all right, let's go to verse 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now notice now, when you read that, you will think Elijah spoke it, but he didn't. Because in James 5, it said he prayed. He prayed first, he got permission, and he asked God that it not rain. And then he prayed again, years late, three years and six months later, and asked God to let it rain. All right? So when you read that, and you're thinking, well, this man got uh, faith to stop something on his own, and he don't. And remember now, go back to the book of James um, five, and uh, have everybody come in here. Everybody, all of you need to sit down and get this, because this, this concern every one of you. The Lord will take care of the door. Leave the door open. And that's why you got all this stuff that's going on, and people, um, instead of believing and growing in the Word, they haven't battled with the Word. Why? Because they're trying to implement the ways of the world and the word, and it don't work. You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to either choose the kingdom of God first, his word. You're going to have to trust in Jesus first, or you trust in the world. There's no trusting in the world and then Jesus. It don't, you got to go one or the other. You, one or the other, you got to go that way. If you don't go that way, you're going to fail, all right? Now look at James again. It says this. Elijah was a man subject to like patch as we are. Meaning he was just like us. He had feelings like us. He was a human. He wasn't Superman. He wasn't Aquaman or Iron Man. He was just like us. And it points out his, his thoughts, his feelings were just, were well, human, all right? He was not an alien. So it says, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and then he prayed again and after he prayed and God gave him permission he went and told the king hey king you ain't getting no rain y'all ain't getting no water for three years and six months y'all ain't getting nothing and he, he said it with confidence with boldness 
Because why? Because he prayed. He got permission. He didn't go up there on his own and say, it ain't going to rain uh, until I say it's going to rain. It without permission. He asked the Lord. Now, who don't understand that? Okay, we're talking about this climate change lie that these fools are talking about that thought millions of people believe. You got people running, post, doing everything, climate change, climate, a bunch of devils. You need to sit down and shut up and let somebody teach you because you sure don't know nothing. Any question before we move on? Now, who don't understand that? All right, any question? Because we got some more, okay? All right, let's go to the book of Joshua, all right? Let's go to Joshua, chapter 10. God, man, we don't have no power to do that. No, that don't bunch of, they, the devil wants y'all to be afraid because fear works against faith. Fear, when you got fear, you can't operate fully in faith, all right? And faith only operates by love that means by loving God. I don't care what people say. The way you, how you know you love Jesus? Correct. Not obey people, but obey Jesus. Long if you obey His word, because people will try to use the word against you, or try to say, especially when you correct them or stand up for what's right. Are you mean or you what? I, you can call me mean, bean, or whatever. It don't matter. As long as I'm standing on the word, that shows I trust in the Lord more than myself or people, all right? Now, go to Joshua chapter 10, all right? Joshua chapter 10. Now, I want you to look at verse 13. And the sun stood, stood still. That's another climate change. You can say whatever you want, but when the sun ain't moving, moving things ain't happening. I don't care what you say, when the sun ain't moving, things are just not happening, all right? The sun has a lot to do, a whole lot of stuff takes place in earth, all right? And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua, Jasher, Jasher, all right? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And then it says in verse 14, and there was no day like that before or after it that the Lord, what? To what? He prayed. And God honored Joshua's prayer. These these stupid, educated fools walking around here talking about climate change, they are nothing but disciples of the devil. That's all they are. Because we don't have the ability to do that. The only time the Lord will allow a human being to do something like that, he has to give them permission. That means they pray. And it's for a spiritual, or for a God cause, all right? Not for man, all right? The devil does everything he can to attack our faith. He doesn't use every, all these storms and stuff we have. It. People, it's for a reason. It is for a reason. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to go to the book of Genesis chapter 9, all right? Genesis chapter 9. It's amazing how these people don't read the word but they want to tell you what's going on. Bunch of lying devils. That's what they are. And I don't agree with them at all. The word don't agree with them. They want you to think they can control something when they can't even control their own thinking. Why? Because they're children of the devil. All right? All right. Genesis chapter 9. And let's start with verse 11. All right? And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the water of a flood. Neither shall there anymore be a flood to 
destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. Now, this is God saying that I'm telling you, I'm making a promise, a covenant. A covenant is a binding agreement that no matter what comes or goes, I will never flood the earth again like I did in the days of the first flood and the second flood. That means the whole earth, all right? And he's saying, I'm making a covenant with you. He says, this, verse 12 again, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual, that's forever, generation. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Now stop right there for a minute, all right? And hold your hand there. Go to St. John, chapter 10. St. John, chapter 10. We're coming, we're going to come back here and finish. Everybody got it? St. John chapter 10, verse 3. It says, To him the porter opened, and the sheep what? Start right there for a minute. Go back again. Go back to Genesis. Just keep in mind, his sheep hear his voice. All right? Now, Everybody back in Genesis? All right. Verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall any flesh be cut off anymore by the water of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood destroyed the earth. And God said, this is the token of my covenant, which I make between me and and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the Earth. All right. Now, well, let's read verse 17. And God said unto Noah, This is the cov this is token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. All right. Now, God said that to remind himself and us that he's not going to destroy the all flesh again with the flood, correct? Okay. Now, my sheep shall hear my voice. Now, when the last time you seen a rainbow? Have you ever seen a rainbow? Well, have you ever seen a rainbow that talks? But when you saw it, you heard a voice. <laughs> Most of you all woke up, huh? When you 
saw the rainbow, you heard a voice. My sheep will hear my voice. See, a lot of people think God has to speak in one way or one language. Everything God does, it speaks. What it means is my people that are born again understand. So we, we don't go around saying, oh, that's a beautiful rainbow, which it is, and all this kind of stuff. We know what it means. Why? Because it speaks to us. Like the son spoke to Joshua and said, you know what? God is with you. Why? It didn't move. <laughs> it's amazing. And that's why these folk don't want you to believe that pestilence, earthquakes and stuff come from God. Because then... If they believe that, you got to know why God is doing it. Because of your wicked ways. And they don't want to acknowledge that. They don't want to recognize that God is bringing about wrath because of the wickedness of man. So what they try to do is blame it on climate change. That's what, why? Because they got that word from the devil. They are preaching the gospel of Satan. Of Satan, that's what they're doing. Now, any questions before we move on now? All right, so you you kind of understand it now. All right, now I want you to go back to St. John chapter 10. The, the, the reason why they're doing this is to fight against faith. Because God is the one that except gave us the right. Well, first of all, God, through his son Christ, established faith, all right? Jesus was the author of faith. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. Abraham was the father of faith. Jesus was the son of God, all man and all God, but Abraham was all human, all man. So Abraham had the right to walk in faith. Like we, you and I have the right to walk in faith. The devil knows that, so he's going to do everything he can to keep the human beings from walking in that right. How? By getting them to believe lies and things like that, or uh, whatever he can do. Why? Because he knows that if a human being really begins to understand faith, they're going to have absolute trust in God and Christ. That means no matter what happens, they're going to know that God and Christ is always, not part-time, but always in control. And because of that, they can really depend on him like they should. Now, in St. John 10, again, all right, let's go back to verse 3. He says, To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, talking about sheep, and lead them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow. Now, what he's saying now, those of you that don't have real faith, the moment the world tells you something, you jump to it. You run to it. Why? Because you believe what they say versus the word. No, no matter what. Okay, so you got a whole, you got millions of people believing in something that God never said, and that is man has the ability to affect the climate, and we do not. Why? Because that came from the devil. Now, the scripture says, my sheep will hear my voice in a stranger. So what climate change came from a stranger. So if you were sheep, you would say, I don't believe that. There ain't no way in the world I believe it. You ain't believe who? You must be stupid. I don't care. You know, we can't curse anymore. We cannot. We cannot go there. But there are sometimes. There are sometimes. There are sometimes. There are some moments where you wanna. 
You want to take French, Swahili, Tahili, if there's such a word, and put all them together and tell these folk how stupid they are. It's like, man, how dumb can you get? Why? Because you don't believe the voice of strangers. And when you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, if you are a Christian and walking in faith, the Holy Spirit will tell you that's, that's sinful. Not ridiculous, that's sinful. Here, you hear stuff like, go from the presence. You know, you need to get out of this. You need to move on. You need to get out. Of it. And you know what? Now, that's what, let me, let me, uh, Jedediah, I told you about it in school. Jedediah, if he was in school now, Jedediah would take this, and he'll go back and tell them. And they'll, they'll be called, they'll be calling uh, his dad and us complaining about him. Why? Because he believed it. And that's why, he got, because he believed it. Well, listen, if the reason, those of you that don't believe in climate change, because you don't believe in strangers, you, you won't, I'm not, you must be, you better. Okay, let me move on before I have to repent. Let me, let me go ahead on and get out of your presence because I see there's no, there's no wisdom or nothing in you. There's a bunch of deadly foolish, all right? So he says that when you got, when you're growing in the real kind of faith, the purpose of faith is to keep us from listening to voice of strangers. That means People that's telling you stuff that goes absolutely against the word. You know, wait a minute, what in the world? You know, good and well, that ain't right. That's the purpose of it. Now, any question before we move on? All right, let's move on, all right? Now, um, go, go to Matthew chapter 12 right quick. And I want you to look at verse 21. Matthew 12, verse 21. I thank God I couldn't be a science teacher because they foolish. They stupid. They tripping. And they're not on drugs. I used to trip, but I was on opium and smoking, you know, crazy stuff. But they're, 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 they are tripping. They, you know what? They don't even believe what they tell you. They don't believe that. They do not believe. They don't believe that. Well, the, you know what? I'm going to tell you why people like to be scientists. Because it sounds scientific, way above, and they make plenty of money. And they, that means a scientist have permission to lie and do it legally. And have you to believe it, even though they don't. Why why you think uh Al Gore is still flying his jets? If he was so caught up in climate change, why they still flying them jets? Get rid of them. People, I on the way here, I saw some mules. They can buy a mule. They can you have <laughs> you have to buy a cow. <laughs> You know what they said about a cow? Y'all know what they y'all don't know what they said about a cow? Man, y'all better wake up. Man, y'all better go find, you know, I'm not gonna you find out what they say about a cow. They wanna get rid of cows. They saying cows pollute the atmosphere. Well you ain't gotta get a cow. Go get a mule. Get a donkey. And ride them. That's, you, you know what? Get rid of everything. Gasoline, get rid of all. Even batteries give off an a, 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 a odor. It sure does. It's amazing. Now, listen to this. In the book of Matthew 12, 21, this is talking to us. Jesus came so that the Gentiles, not just the Jews, but every non-speaking Jew can trust in what Jesus said, can trust in his word, everyone. The devil knows this.
this. So he going to use any kind of method or uh, uh, phrase, psychology, whatever he, word he can use to help you not to trust in Jesus. Because Jesus, when you start trusting in the word, the word cut out all this foolishness because it leads you to one man, Jesus, and one God, the Father. So that means you begin to learn how to put all of your hopes, dreams, whatever, in them. So you come to a place of thinking that if anything happened, God has something to do with it, meaning this. That don't mean he did it, but he either did it or allowed it to be done. Why? Because there's nobody over God. There's no trial or tribulation. There's no storm over God. God in Christ have the ability to control the storm. The storms do not control them. So when you try to walk in your faith, which is man faith, or the world's faith, what it does, it causes faith in God in you to be deluded. And what it's called, it's called doubt and unbelief. And when you walk in doubt and unbelief, then you can't operate in faith. Why? Because the scripture says, without it, you cannot please God. And the devil knows that. So what he tries to do? He won't stop you from re reading and quoting the word, but he'll stop you from believing it with your whole heart by attaching things to it, like whatever man says or whatever comes down from the devil. All right? Any question before we move on? And what you have to do, you have to come to a place of absolutely, totally believing in his word. Just like Job, Job said it this way. If he slay me, I'm going to still trust him. Abraham said it this way. I'm going to keep looking until I find what God wants me to find. And the Bible says he died in faith. He died believing what God said. And he found after death what God meant. And that's where he's at now. And those of you that try to yoke with the world and yoke with the word, it ain't going to work. It won't work for you. That's what, why. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to contaminate God's faith by contaminating his word. And that's why it don't work in your life. You're going to have to absolutely believe this word with your whole heart. Or... You're going to have to believe the world and die and go to hell, whatever you do. But what you can't do is believe both. You cannot believe both. All right? Any question before we move on? So Jesus came so we can trust in him. Now, we can't see Jesus with our eyes. So what do he mean trust in him? What he left, what well, we can see? His word. So that means if you're walking in faith, and the Bible calls it the word of faith in, in uh, Romans 10, if you're learning how to walk in faith every day, you're going to put the word before even your feelings. Why? Because you're growing in it. You're learning how to grow in it. You're learning how to believe heaven instead of believing what's in the earth. But when you walk it out, not, not quoting scriptures, not saying something, but really walking it out. When you walk, doing it. <laughs> All right? I mean, you doing it. Under any circumstance, I'm just going to, you know, I feel this way, but the word told me I'm, my feeling is wrong, so I'm going to get rid of that feeling. I'm going back to the word. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That's called denying yourself. All right? All right, any other questions? Any questions before we move on? All right. Now, um, Psalms 18. Now, 
Now, Sunday, those of you that were here and listening, you understand. Hey, okay, nobody can tell me that um, God don't control storms. Nobody, you you lying dog. I don't care if you think that way. I tell you to your face. And even though some of you didn't say it, even you think that way, you a lying dog. You ain't nothing but a lying dog. Those of you that think that way, you, you're nothing but a lying dog. That's all you are. It's God that controls the storm. It's God that blesses us. It's even God that blesses the unjust. The devil don't bless nobody. Man can't bless nobody. So blessing has to come from somebody. Blessing don't grow unless the Lord bless it to grow. <laughs> so it ain't you or me or whatever. It's, it's God. The devil do not want you to absolutely have complete faith in God and Christ. He don't. So what he does, he do everything he can to battle against you when it comes to your relationship or belief, whatever the word says. And that's why the scripture says that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because without it, we can't win. We cannot win. So you believe in the word when you come here, then you go back home and don't walk it out. You a hypocrite. You ain't doing yourself no good. And then when the storms come, you start praying, but your prayer don't work. Why? Because you have no faith. You have no faith. Why? Because you come here and you hear the word, then you go back to your same old way. You haven't grown. You don't try to grow. And the devil sees that. So he sees the opportunity to keep you under his bondage. Why? Because you do one thing and say something different. Or you say one thing and do something different. And that's why the scripture says, it's not the hearers that are justified, but the doers. In other words, the word ain't doing you no good when you go back out there and live like the world. You're a hypocrite. And, uh, and then you're going to die and go to hell. Why? Because in the book of Matthew 23, Jesus said, except your righteousness exceed what? The Pharisees, you're going to die and go to hell. The Pharisees quoted scriptures. They prayed. They prayed tithes. They read, they read the scriptures. But they didn't live it. So it didn't benefit them. And you, there's no change in your life. To all of you like that, you ain't going to heaven. Nobody going to heaven like that. Why? Because the word said it. The same word that told us about heaven and hell said, set the condition for us to get there. Now, any question? If you got a problem with that, it's because you ain't saved. I mean, you definitely ain't saved. I'm saying, no. It, the only way you can get to heaven based on what you said, you would have had to create heaven and hell. It will be better for you to have did that if you're going to think that way. Because if you create it, then it's yours. All right? Any question before we move on? <laughs> All right. All right. The book of Psalms 18. Listen to this. Now, this is... Let's do this first. Let's do this first. Verse... I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my what? Now, this is David praying. Now, I want you to go to verse 9. He bowed the heaven. Now, this is David saying what God did. He bowed the heavens also. Bow means he opened up. Now you ain't got to believe this. It don't matter to me whether you believe it or not. I hope you do. But when I say it don't matter to me, it ain't going to stop me from getting up there. All right? Your unbelief ain't going to stop my belief. He's saying... He bowed the heavens also and came down. And darkness 
was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, one of his angels, and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Now, if you can fly on the wind, then I'll believe you. Now, this is saying what God, what this, I'm going to say it this way. This is saying what this person's ability is and what he does. Either that or his line. But it ain't lying. It says, he made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. And what this is saying is this. Darkness, God could be around us in darkness and we can't see him. Because darkness is his secret place. Or darkness, in other words, God, people, God still comes to the earth. Can you understand that? He didn't stop when Abraham died. He still come. But we can't see in the dark. But he have no problem. That God, for you unbelievers, you have a problem with that. When God get ready, he go wherever he want to. How you know? Because he told me whatever he want to do, he do it. Just because he didn't ask you, don't mean nothing. God, God comes down, he made it. He come down when he get ready. He ain't got to call and make an appointment with you. He don't need no security. Listen, listen to what David say, say he did. He made darkness his he made darkness his secret place. Now you and I, we can't see in the dark. But he intentionally made darkness to keep him secret. He says his pavilion. Round about him were dark waters, thick clouds of the sky. Pavilion means large space or just space. And what he's saying is this. He's saying troubled waters don't hinder his travel. It, he don't slow down if the waves get up. He, when, 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 if, 15, 25 foot waves is just like walking on sand. It's saying what God does. It's, it's people. It's not talking about who God is right now. It's talking about what he does. Can you? Can you do that? Can you do that? You'll be drowned in shock, babe. Listen to what he said. He made darkness secret place, all right, verse 12. At the bright, at the brightness that was before him, his clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. What this is saying is this, God, that's why when Jesus was on the earth, God would speak, and people said thunder. People, God, God, people. hell come because God have it to come. It, it, but it's making a statement. You know why? When his people are walking in his word, they are blessed all the way around. God, let me tell you what you can't do. You can never say God abused you if you're a child of God. You can never say he did anything to hurt you if you were doing right. It's when you don't do right when you go through them trials and tribulations. Chastisement, punishment, try to get you back on. But see, the world and religion, along with the devil, don't want you to believe that. They don't want you to attribute 
the storm and the hurricanes to God. But who made them? They didn't make themselves. And the devil didn't make them. The only thing the devil make is trouble. And you know what God do? After the devil make it, God come. <laughs> God say, quiet now. Be still. Shut up. And the devil didn't like that. So he came up with climate the change. <laughs> gee, Lord Jesus. Listen to this. It says, Lord God, yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and said, he, and he shot out lightning and discomfited them. People, lightning don't come from hot and cold. Lightning come because God created it. You ain't got to believe this. That's your problem. He the one going to light your fire in hell. You ain't, but the, the whole point is to get people not to see God as God. Why? Because if you really understand that he is God, and the only thing he cannot do is sin, when you really, when you get that in your heart, you will find yourself doing just what it says in Proverbs 3 and 5. You begin to acknowledge, Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go here? You, you, you begin to pray your every movement. Why? Because you really believe in your heart that he's the one going to prosper you in whatever you do. Like the scripture, it's him that calls my hands to prosper. Nobody else. It's not me, you, no gathering, no nation, no government. It's him that calls me to prosper. So, I don't have to bow down to you because you go give me something. If you give me something, it's because God intended for you to give me. If it's good. It ain't you. It wasn't yours to start with. When you were born, you were born naked. You didn't even you didn't have a diaper to put on. You didn't even know what a diaper is. <laughs> didn't even know how to change yourself. Mm, what's that smell? Somebody else had to change. It's like, man, jeez. But the thing, of, that's why back in the early years, men of God like Abraham, Moses, uh, Joshua, they knew that when God says something, ain't nobody going to change it. And you know what? They act like it. They'll cut your head off. They didn't care whether you were their twin brother or mama or daddy, you go. Like, that's why Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? See, you sat there, and you don't kill nobody. But Moses said that and killed folk. He went to battle. He started slaughtering the wicked. People that were brothers killing brothers. Why? Because they were wicked. They weren't right. Why? Because they believed God. They believed, they, they believed, you know what? They feared God. They had respect for God. Not like these generations. This is a wicked generation. Even the so-called church is wicked. Bunch of wicked devils in it. We have no fear of God. And you know what? The more you read this word, the more you see people ain't saved. If you were saved, you know what you do? You, there's a fear of God you have. That means when you leave here, you're going to put that word in practice. Because you know what? When you leave here, you didn't leave God here. He was where you go get to. And you know that. And you say, you know what? I better reference this, this being why. Because he know all things. Who, what can get past it? But when you don't have the right kind of faith, you think you can do anything you big enough to do, anything you get away with, you think you can do it, and God sees it all. No fear of God. And then when the storms come and you pray, it don't work. Why? Because you wasn't walking in faith. You didn't, have, you didn't have no, you act like you had faith, but you really didn't. Why? Because your action shows you what you really were. And that's what the devil does. That's what he sees. And that's why people, a lot of people don't have no faith at all, period. Any questions before we move on? We got some more to give you. This is what it says. It says, 
Then the channels of waters were seen, and the found foundations of the world were discovered at thy what? O oh Lord, at the blast of thy breath, of thy not. And what he's saying, God, when God gets angry, things happen. Storm, the thing, things are seen. Discovered means to be shown up or seen. When, and these fools, so they can continue to walk under the authority of the devil and man, they lie to you all and tell, come up with stuff like, Climate change, God ain't doing that. If God ain't doing it, it ain't going to be done. Let me say that again. If God is not doing it, the devil can't bring storm. Or he can stir up some stuff, but God calms the thing. He will stop that. Why? And if you notice, the more the scripture says this in Matthew 24. In the last days, earthquakes, famines, pests, all of this is said going to increase. But it also said sin was going to increase. He said what was going to decrease is the love of man. But everything else wicked going to increase. And that's why all this stuff is going on and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And like now all of you, those of you that when the Lord told you what was going to happen, what you did, because you didn't believe it, you didn't prepare. You went out and you forgot about it. But it still come. It came, and it's going to come again. But it's going to be much worse than it was this time. The Lord, the Lord told you all what was going to happen is coming here. But you didn't believe it, and those of you that didn't, you got caught up in it. Those of you that did and applied yourself, the Holy Spirit will lead you called wisdom to do certain things so you can stay in the land of Goshen. While everybody else was in Egypt, you was in the land of Goshen. Why? Because the Lord told you, but because you are unbeliever, a hard-headed, full of pride, you didn't apply that wisdom to your life, and you got caught. Hopefully you learned from it, because it's going to happen again. It's going to, why? Not because of, if you live in right, you're going to walk in faith. But when you trying to Believe the world, believe the word, it ain't gonna work. You're gonna walk in doubt. You're gonna walk, and you think it's faith, but it's really not. Why? Because, see, real faith gives you the wisdom to believe God, and a stranger, you ain't gonna. For during the week at home, we had air. We had cold. We watched TV all week long. You calling me, asking me, do I need help? I had help. We, we, we had hot water to take, take a shower. Why? Because I understood what the Lord said. And when you walk in, every one of you, when you walk in wisdom, and when you believe it, God automatically gives you wisdom and telling you, tell you what to do. Why? Because you believe what he said. When, if you believe it, you're already guided by him. So he just put in your heart what to do, and you start doing stuff and don't even know you, you do it. He's leading you until the time comes. People, <clears throat> that, I told y'all about the threshold. Putting the, putting the blood on the, shit. Some of y'all forgot, even got, forgot about that. People, people, let me tell you something. The problem with the church is they really play church and don't apply the word to when they go back out there in the world cause of fear and intimidation cause you're different. I want to be different. I don't want to be like you worldly folk. I don't, I don't want to be like none of you, n not any of you worldly folk. Why? Because I know you're wicked. You ain't right. You're not right. I want help. And the word gives me help. The word is able to endure all things. People, I don't be worried about what's going to come. Why? Because the word going to take me through it. Why? Because the word cannot lose. You can do nothing against the truth. I keep telling y'all that. That's why it's so important. Each one of you got a right to walk out the word and listen what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't let the person sitting next to you stop you. 
You are a fool when you let the person next to you hinder your faith. Why? Because they, they the devil put them in your life to bring you down. That's what he does. That's the purpose. All, all workers of the devil do not want to believe God's word. So any question before we move on? We're just trying to help y'all. I don't care who it is. I don't care if your family, your husband, your wife, I don't care who it is. Anybody that tries to get you away from the word of God is not of God. It's not. They got that stranger's voice. I don't care who it is. Any questions? I'm going to walk out this word. I'm going to heaven, and I'm going to endure in Jesus' name because I got the right to do two things, trust in his name and trust in his word. And I will not trust in the human being. I won't even trust in me. I'm not going to do that. I am not. This word is right. It is just right. And that's why the scripture says, the Lord told us, Elijah wasn't special. He said, Elijah was like us. He was a human being. Your problem is when you don't have real faith, you sit there and you try to. No, that ain't going that's why you can't walk out the word. The purpose of the only way for you to walk out the word, you gotta forget about you and look at you as being nothing. You can't do nothing right without the word. Not anything. There's no good thing in us at all. And if the word is in us, that's when we have that treasure in earth and vessel. You ain't got that treasure, you ain't no good at all. That's correct. He says this. Look what he said. It says, Lord, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of the water. That means he took me out of trouble. He delivered me from my strongest enemy. And people, I couldn't do nothing against this storm. You couldn't either. And I, I said, you know what? I came down here Sunday morning. I didn't realize what had happened until I left here Sunday evening. Because when I came in early, it was dark. When I walked out here, every one of you, every one of you in here, but you, you, should, you know what? Even if we didn't have praise and worship, you ought to be praising the Lord for the rest of your life. All the devastation I saw out there. And you come in here like you full of pride and air, and you, you want to be entertained. You are a devil. You ain't saved. You're not right. When I saw all that stuff, I had to start. It's like, man, whoa, look at all this. Who you think you are? So I thank God for keeping my little stuff. I really do. And while everybody else was worried, I'm praising the Lord. I'm magnifying him. Why? Because I know he was the God of the storm. I, listen, ho, ho. I don't care how loud that hurricane got. The roar, I kept on praising and blessing him. Why? Because my praise was louder than his roar. Woo. Jesus. Any question before we move on? Some of y'all might have been hiding under the bed. I wasn't. I was up praising and magnifying him. Thanking him for his goodness. Who oh God. He said, listen, it says, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hate me, for they were too strong for me. That's what faith, when you got real faith, your enemies will be sitting in front of you and don't bother you. Why? Because ain't nothing they can do. Ain't nothing. The only reason why they still are here is because you're interceding for them. Why? Because the Bible said the prayer of the righteous, not the wicked. Who you think you are? You are a witch or a warlord, and you think you're going to control me? No, the only reason why you're still here is because the righteous is praying, Lord, deliver that fool. Set them free. Deliver those folk full of pride in there. People, that don't sound like no person that's feared, intimidated, or scared. No, the righteous got boldness. When you begin to understand God. Jesus. Who can fight against God? Well then God is for me. Jesus. I don't need you to tell me God is for me. I know he is. Why? Because I'm going to walk in his word. Because he's for me. 
He's for me. That's the kind of faith we're supposed to have. Any question before we move on? People, I ain't putting nobody or nothing before his word. I've learned that I don't have enough faith, so I'm going to keep growing in it. And nobody going to stop me. I want some more faith. I want some more faith. Let's go back to Psalms. Uh, well, let's go to Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord. People, you, those of you, you know what? I don't care who you are. Like Paul said. If you got a wicked wife, you follow the word. If you got a wicked husband, you follow the word. Because there's no sense in both of you dying and going to hell. I don't care who you are. It don't make me know that you can bolt, you can do whatever you want to do. Whenever you rise up against a Christian, your life is going to be full of turmoil. You're going to face situations that you wouldn't normally face. Why? Because you touch God's anointing. You rose up against a child of God, and God said, you know what? Like David said, my enemies, you made them my footstool, and when the enemies rose up against me, you put them down. You, that's why some of you go through stuff, because you ain't right. You're wicked. Every time you turn around, you're sick or something. Why? Because you ain't right, and you know you're not right. Why? You don't have enough faith to walk out there and walk in the world with it. Why? Because you're a hypocrite. And you know what you are. Why? Because the truth brings up. Real faith puts you out there in the battle. And you go to in the name of Jesus. I don't care whether you believe it or not. I don't need an army to believe the word. I believe the word without an army. I believe the word because it's right. It's just right. It is just right, folks. Proverbs chapter 3. Listen. Proverbs, that's what, when you believe the word, you grow too. It's impossible for a Christian not to grow when they walk in faith. That's automatically. When you walk in faith, you're getting stronger and stronger in believing heavenly things. And you're getting rid of these earthly things. Now, Proverbs 3, listen to what it says. It says in verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, he done told us, don't put our trust in princes, don't, which is leaders. Don't put our trust in man, which is human beings. It would be better to put your trust in God. Matter of fact, he told you, don't even put your trust in your own boat. That means your own strength. Oh, I got wisdom. I can do this or do that. He said, don't even put your trust in your riches. Why? Because everything I just said going to fail, and you're going to find out. Some of you are going to find out the hard way. So, he, you know, he said this. Lord God. The people that trust in the Lord during hard times, they're going to mount up with wings like an eagle. The young man going to fail. Those of you young that's walk, that's why you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it. Why? Because you think that you're young and you got time and strong and all this kind of stuff. And you're going to find out that out there, all you're going to do is make mess. That's all you're going to do. Why? Because you trust in you and not God. That, look around. Just take a good look around. Take a good look. You parents, I don't care whether you deny, you see what your children doing. You see exactly what they doing. Now, you, and let me tell you something. You didn't make the cross. You didn't make heaven or hell, and you can't put them in there. They go in the hell regardless whether they God gets your permission or not. Every one of them that's wicked, you're going to die in your sins. And you're going to go to hell. Your mamas and dad, they'll try to stick up for you, cover up for you. They're going to die too. Why? Because they really don't believe God. Now, you don't like this. The reason why you don't like it, because you are not a Christian. You don't like the truth. You have deceived yourself. See, some of you think that deception is out there. It's in here. Every one of you that get up and go back your own way, you are deceiving your own self. And it's getting worse. When you got real faith, there's a love for God and his word that keeps you going when you get out there. That's why you, when 
you get out there, the only thing you, only person you know you need is the Lord. Why? Because the Lord, he, he has a way of causing you to walk in peace all the time. All, I mean, it's, it, it, it is so, it is so wonderful. You, he, all, he, he, people, it, you ought to try, those of you that haven't found, you ought to get saved and try. He will do just what Isaiah said. He will keep you in perfect peace as long as your mind. And the reason why your mind can't stay on him because you don't have real faith. The purpose of faith is to change us completely from earthly folk, from focusing on the earth to heavenly folk while we here. While we, and that's why the scripture says, if you them in risen with Christ, you have no problem with seeking those things above. I want more of Jesus. I want more of Christ. I want to walk in the word more. I want to see more heavenly things. I, I want to see the righteous prosper and the wicked brought down. Any question before we move on? And they will be. They will be. He said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. What the reason why I'm not going to follow me, because I don't know where to go. <laughs> I don't know where to go. I don't, I'm not ashamed to tell you. I know some of you brainies, you think you know what to do. You don't have to ask the Lord or whatever. Thank God I ain't like you. I used to be like you, but I got saved. I'm not a brain, I got saved. So what I'm learning to do even more is always ask the Lord something. Oh, Lord, should I do this? And things that he did, things happen. I want you to listen to this. I have two generators at the house, big generators I was using. And I was led to go to Lowe's to get another one. I got out of my truck. Three guys I don't even know just said, where are you going for? They ain't got nothing. Ain't, they don't have it. What you going for? I said, I'm going to get a generator. Oh, they ain't got no generator. They going back to the, they going back to the truck. I said, I'm going to go in here and check anyway. I went in there. The first salesman I went through said they had no generator. I got ready to walk out of Lowe's and ran into a, 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 a sales lady. And I asked her, I said, when y'all going to get more generators? A truck just came in. <laughs> now, you, a, they had to, and I, I looked down in the garden section, and people were lining up. They, pe people, you, I don't care what, I'm going to say, I don't care what you fools, and if you're a fool, you don't believe thing. It, it, my generator came straight off the truck on my truck. Brother, it's amazing what God do. It's, and you know what? The thing about it, I see it all the time. I, it's, I keep telling y'all, if I'm cutting grass, you, I found out this. If, I'm, if it's like it's going to rain, I pray and ask the Lord, don't let it rain. He'll stop it. And every Thursday, I cut my grass to the point my neighbors start cutting theirs on Thursday. <laughs> you hear them all cranking up. I'm just telling you the whole truth. It's amazing how, and I'm not putting myself on a pedal. It's the word. It is the word. Why? Because I know who controls the rain, the storm, and it's not the sound. Thunder, sound, don't mean nothing to me. Why? Because the thunder is controlled by God. So lightning is controlled by God. And God, if you understand that God, people say you're a fool. Fine, I'm a fool for God. When you begin to walk in faith, you begin to understand God can control whoever, whatever, whenever, however he wants to. And that's what he does. So why you have to bow down to people? You don't. Why you, I, you won't. Why? Because you, your relationship is being developed with God in Christ. In other words, you're supposed to trust in him like that. And that's why when I hear stuff from the world, some of the stuff you receive, I know that's from strangers. I ain't believing that. 
Ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me that junk. Why? Because it's from the devil. I know where it's from. Any question before we move on? That's how you're supposed to grow. And those of you that's not growing, look at your life. You don't ever change. You end up the same way to struggle. And when the battles come, you're always losing. losing. You're, you're trying to make it, and it's hard. Why? Because instead of walking in faith and really trusting the Lord by believing his word, you don't do it. You come here and hear the word and go back off and do what you normally do instead of allowing the word to work through you. And when the word don't work through you, you don't benefit. You can say you're a child of God all you want. But if the word do not identify you as a child of God, you're not. My sheep will hear my voice. Any other question before we move on? We're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going. Y'all quiet now, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, 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 in Psalms 40, I want you to look at something. Go to Psalms 40. Real Christians have faith in God's word, and it's growing. It, it is, it, it's, it's growing. It's, it's like, man, this, your, your thinking is, this man is really in charge. He's really in charge. He is really in charge. Thank God you don't need my relationship for you to go grow, and I don't need yours. Everybody has an individual right to walk out this word to the fullest. I don't care what people say about you. They can call you mean, stupid, crazy, whatever. Long as you're walking out this word, they can't do nothing against you at all. Nothing at all. Now, in Psalms 40, verse 4, blessed is that man that makes the Lord his what? Wait a minute. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his So, the purpose of the word is, is for us to make Jesus and God our absolutely trust. That means total dependency on them. Total dependency. That means no matter what, you the word will bring you to a place where everything that comes to you, you check it. Is that right? It, it, everything that comes to you, you check it. And whatever is not of God, you know what you do? You make a U-turn. You No, that ain't of God. Why? Because what you're doing, you're allowing yourself to be controlled by somebody that you can't see with your eyes, but you love him anyway. And then because of that, you see the outcome or the fruit of trusting in him. In other words, the same word that says trust is the same word that says God will provide. The same word. Trust always leads you to the ram in the bush. It all, why? Because you decided, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to step in, out in faith. I'm going to do what the word says and then let what happen, happen. Because everything that the word says is going to happen is going to happen for my good. Why? Because the scripture says all things work together for those that obey him, which means that love him because they obey him. So everything that happens is for my good. So I'm going to make sure by trusting in his word. Any question before we move on? He says, Many, okay, bless is the man that make the Lord his trust and respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lie. You know what, this committee have, boy, that is a lying witch. You talking about a, that people, that woman, people, you know what, she got it from Joe Biden. There's a, there was a spiritual transfer, and she is twofold more the child of hell than Joe Biden. Now, he, 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 they put, you, you know what, though? The Bible always right. When you hang with buzzers, you know, buzzers will eat other buzzers. Just because you flying with them, just because you eating with them, don't mean that they won't eat you. Die. They 
yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, boys. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing how the Bible talks about how the wicked bring down themselves. The wicked people. What people? Wait a minute. Okay, okay. Quiet for a minute. Somebody just hard here today. That, that's a rebellious spirit, what it is. All right. What happened to the devil? The devil brought down himself. Nobody influenced the devil. He had it made. And he brought down himself. That's what you wicked folk do. You bring down yourself. That's why the scripture says, the soul that sinneth sins against your own self, and the soul that sinneth is going to die. Ain't nobody, listen, every person that's in hell, nobody caused them to go. They went by themselves. I don't care whether somebody deceived them, they allow themselves to be. They, everybody, there's nobody in hell got there because somebody else. Everybody in hell got there because they trusted in whatever wickedness or wicked person they trust in. Every last one of them. God will be an unjust God if he let one human being go to hell because of another human being. Each one of you is going to give an account of your own justification or your own unjustification, meaning this. Each one of you, there's, you're going to stand before the Lord and give an account of what you did. Not what somebody else did, but what you did. God, don't, God ain't going to ask you about your, who influenced you. He's not going to ask you about who deceived you. You know what he's going to do? When you stand before that great judge, he going to tell you the opportunities you missed, and then the angel going to cast you in the lake of fire. Every last person. There's not one person that's going to go to hell because of somebody else. If you was influenced by somebody else, it's because you allowed yourself. You, al you did. You did. You the one decided. Well, you know what? I'm going to follow that lie. I'm going to follow whatever that witch or that warlord. You did it, and that's why you're going to die and go to hell. Ain't people, my mama ain't going to cause me to go to hell. She can go to hell if she want to, whatever she wants. That's her problem. But I ain't going to hell because of her wickedness. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? And then I'm not going to deceive myself into thinking that if I give in, that it's going to help. I'm going to stick to this word. Because you know what? In the last day, guess who I'm not going to stand in front of? My mama or my dad. My last day, I'm going to stand in front of Christ or God. I made up in my mind, it's going to be Christ first. God, I'll see him later. But I'm going to... I'm going to make, now each one of you got the same thing. You can sit there and shake your head or whatever. It don't mean nothing to God. Why? Because in that last day, that last breath, it's over for you. That's why the scripture calls it, once a person die, immediately, you in judgment. Your death brings you to judgment. It don't bring you, it, death do not bring you to non-existence. It brings you to a whole nother level of existence that you never know. Why? Because you didn't know how alive you was because of what Adam did. But once you leave this body, you're going to be more knowledgeable, more aware. You're going to be more aware of everything. And you know something else too? Not only are people going to spend eternity in the flame torment, but they're going to spend eternity thinking about, I had to change. Like the rich man. The rich man thought about, I had the chance, and I wouldn't. I had the chance to do right, and I wouldn't take it. I was so full of myself, I decided not to. So, Abraham, can you get someone, can you get a preacher to go to my family and tell them,
You know why he did that? Because he was down there thinking about the chances he had. So all that's going to be running in through you. And let me tell you something. Forever, it ain't going to change. Forever. So not only are the wicked tormented by their flesh in pain and suffering, but even in their mind. You know why? Because you can't change nothing. You can't say, can I come out now? You can't serve 20 years and get another chance. No, once you leave here, it's over. Once you leave here, it is over. And those of you that don't want to think about it, let me tell you what God won't do. He won't help you to think about it. He'll let you go on and go on until one day death hits you and you wake up in hell. That's what happened to the rich man. The rich man said this. The rich man had plans because he was basing his trust in wealth and riches. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear down my house. I'm going to build a bigger house. I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going to buy new cars. I'm going to get all this. His plans were to wake up the next day and then go out there and enjoy himself with his money. But the thing about it, he died that night. And he ended up in hell. And guess what? He couldn't go to the bank. <laughs> he couldn't even go to the teller. He could not even get it. Why? Why? Because he in hell. It's amazing how people do not understand that your last chance is just your now chance. After that, you ain't got no other chance. It's over. It is over. It is over. So what people do? They make excuses. They lie. They don't. That's why folk don't want to hear the truth. Why? They want to go to these dead churches, listen to these dead preachers. Why? Because they can go out and do what they want to do and feel comfortable. But you know something, though? Wickedness never brought complete peace. It can. That's why. Because, see, God put a curse on the wicked. What is it? The way of a transgressor is So no matter, even what you think is peace, you haven't even experienced peace yet. Why? Because peace do not come from the outside. Peace comes from the inside. When you got peace with God in Christ, you can sit home and really enjoy the presence of time. Meaning this. You sit there, and time is pleasant. You ain't worried about nothing. You're not worried about getting caught. You're not worried about nothing. Why? Because you're sitting there thinking about the Lord and how good and pleasant it is to dwell with him. That's what you're doing. When you got real peace, I mean real peace, folks. Real, real peace passes time. Pleasant time. Any question before we move on? There, I'm telling you, there's a difference. There's a holy difference. And the only time you experience that, those of you that's in and out, I know you don't experience. Why? Because you ain't right. It's impossible to experience the peace of God without walking out his word. All right, go ahead. Apostle, um, in this latter part of verse 4 when it says, such as turn aside to lies. Mm -hmm. So... With this, the strange language of climate change. So when she said, "Vote for me, and you won't have any more Cat Four, Cat Five. You only have Cat One, Cat Two. Like she controlled. She said that. Did she? Yeah. Anything will come out of that devil's mouth. <laughs> People, that woman married to see. It ain't the whirlwind. The witches. People grow up. Hey, you know, uh, we used to. It we grew up. And then all of a sudden the wind starts stirring up, and people, the old folks say, hey, you know, that's the, well, the devil whooping his wife. They his wife. They lying. They lying. She is wife. Her, oh, she, she married, she married people. You'll be surprised what these witches will do. Go ahead. As far as turn aside to lies, because people, like it says, the, the people that trust in the Lord, they won't go for that. But you got these people now, they're, they're going aside, going that way with her, just believing it. Yeah, because she black. People, my grandmama had a kettle that was black. I don't want to be born. My grandmama had an iron kettle. She used to put a fire on them during the winter time, and we they'll be cooking hogs or whatever they cooking. People, I don't want to get in that part. It's black. No, I'm not. It's stupid the way people saying, 
I see how wicked this woman is in her clan, but I'm still going to go with them. And, this people, and look at all the preachers. It's like, man, do you want, you get up there and you say homosexuality is wrong. Um, teaching children to go against God's word is wrong. But then you go at this witch that's doing all of it. And then you're going to come behind the pulpit and lie. People, the, the Lord said it was going to be like this. And every one of you see it. Every last one. I'm not asking you to, I don't need your agreement or nothing. Matter, matter of fact, the only thing I need is Jesus. But every one of you see it. It's like, man, and it's growing. It's getting worse and worse every day. Why? Because the devil knows his time is short. So what he got to do, he got to get everybody in a position to, to be persuaded to go to hell because he knows that he can't go there. You know, the devil going to be destroyed. Do y'all know that? When you, the wicked is going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. That means forever. That means forever. You, if you think that you can't handle pain now, you haven't heard, seen no pain yet. You haven't, you haven't experienced what you're going to experience if you end up in hell and the lake of fire. So all, all of you that think that hell is better than obeying God's word, you're going to find out. You're gonna, and some of you are going to find And let me tell you what. You're going to find out. That means you ain't going to know when death's going to come. It's, when it comes, you're already in it. And it's too late. Your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife, your son, or none, none of you can help anybody. That's why he said, do not trust in leaders and do not trust in each other. And the world got this thing, we need to help each other. We need, but you know what? Every time you do that, you get harder and harder in your resistance against God. And you know what God do? God get, God punches get stronger and stronger and who you think going to last? Who you think going to last? It's a fool. That's why a lot of people, they don't read this Bible. Why? Because they believe if they don't know, if they don't know, it's going to be okay. They're going to find out. <laughs> Any question for you? We're just trying to help y'all. Talking about real faith. Real faith. Okay. He says, Verse 5, many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are towards us. Faith, meaning this, when a person walk in faith, people, God and Christ is thinking about us more than we thinking about us. And the, God and Christ will to us towards those that walk in faith is always good. Always good. That's why the scripture says he delight in the prosperity of his people. To the wicked, he said, the wealth of the wicked is only only reason why you we, um, well, because it's laid up for them. But to the righteous, he delight. God loves seeing his children prosper. He loves it. I mean, he loved, he delight. So he makes sure they do it. Whew, what kind of God that is. They cannot be reckoned upon in order unto the meaning of this. When you walk in faith, we, there's no number in the human race that we know of to give a number of how many times the Lord thinks about us. That's when you walk out the word. When you don't walk out the word, he don't. Because it says the face of the Lord is always against them that do evil. So when you do evil, oh, God come and get you. All the reason why you're still here now is not because of his grace, but his mercy. But when, and let me tell you something. His mercy runs out when he said it is. And that's what happened. When God takes his mercy away, ain't nothing going to save you. 
nothing at all. Why? Because when God takes his mercy, what replaces is his wrath. I'm just telling you the truth. He said this. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. People, the purpose of the word is to help us to get stronger and stronger in faith so when things come, we won't be soon shaken. Our hearts won't fail us. Why? Because our focus is not in what's happening in the earth, but what's happening in heaven. Our focus is on the Word. The Word teaches us what's taking place up there and what we can walk in down here. And that's why the Scripture says when a person is saved by grace and walking out of the Word, you begin to understand that you've been raised up and you're sitting in heavenly places. In that's the purpose of faith, real faith. Those of you that's not growing, you ain't got no faith. You lying. And let me tell you something. Every one of you that deceived the other. Now go to Job for a minute before we close. This what this what what what, what wicked faith does to people. That's why I, I encourage all of you. I don't care who it is. You don't, listen, if you can't, your scriptures don't move me at all. It's your walk. You can quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, but your walk, that's you. What you do, that's you. And I won't stand, I won't allow anybody to tell me anything about the word that's not walking it out. You ain't telling me nothing at all. You can't. Why? Because whatever you tell me is coming from a hypocrite, a transferring of spirits. Taking place. That's why some of you act like the others of you. Why? Because there's a transformation thing. But you don't believe that. <laughs> you don't believe that. Joe, 30, we're just trying to help you. Those of you that want to be solid in the word, and walk out this word. Listen what God. Now we're going to read this again. Job 38. Then the Lord. And let me tell you. Those of you that have faith. You don't believe this. But listen to this. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now. God answered Job. God talking to a man. And he's using a. Uh, tornado to talk to him. The tornado ain't tearing up nothing. Ain't nothing being destroyed. He just talking to him out of, you know, people. God use a jackass. Who, who are you to sit there and doubt God? Doubt his word. It says, this is what God did out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkened counsel? In other words, those of you that give advice to other people that do not line up with the word, the Lord says you're giving out dark counsel. In other words, it's wicked. It ain't right. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge, meaning you have no idea what you're talking about. You're trying to instruct somebody in God's righteousness, and you have no idea what you're saying. And God going to hold you accountable. You know why? The scripture says this in Luke. Every person that calls another person to die and go to hell in sin, that person, it would have been better for that person to have a millstone tied around their neck and be cast into the sea. So those of you that give out wicked counsel that don't line up with the word, God calls it dark counsel. He says this. He says, who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy lawns like a man, and I will demand of thee and answer them. 
See, Job, now, during his trial, he said some things that he didn't understand what he was saying. But his so-called friends were actually saying things that were not right. So God said, all of you in the same boat because you didn't know what you was talking about. That's why those of you that love to run your mouth, you're going to always get in trap. Why? Because you're going to always say something. You have no knowledge of what you're saying. But let me tell you something. While you saying it, it's in God's memory. What you mean? Every idle word is going to come back to you because God going to send it back to you. Why? Because you said stuff that is not lined up with the word. And folk, that's all over the world. Every day you see people saying stuff that's just not lined up with the word, and then they turn around and wonder why they going through stuff. Why? Because you're lying. You're lying. Real faith governs your mouth. It puts you in a place where you learn how to set a watch over your mouth. Why? Because the word is governing your heart. That's real faith. And you can rejoice. You can... People, when other people are going through hard times, you can go through hard times and you'll be rejoicing. And they'll, they will be out of their mind. They, they, they don't know what is going on. Why? Because in their heart, there's no substance. Everything in their heart is wicked. That's why Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will. You know what? I'm going to give it to you. Why? Because whatever you ask is going to be in line with my word. You're not going to ask foolish stuff. Why? Because your main objective is going to be on Christ. Any question? Now, wait a minute. Be on Christ. Look to Jesus. That means you're looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Go ahead. Apostle, um, the scripture that you just gave us about um, if the word dwells in you and you and him ask what you will. So Joshua and Elijah was abiding. Correct. And so they were able to ask and then he moved. He moved. With the... he, he, and nobody could stop. That's why Elijah went back to the king and said, it ain't going to rain till I said so. Why? Because he ain't got that from God. He ain't come from him like some of these priests. Well, you know, Elijah prayed. And, no, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord gave him permission to say what he said. Oh, God. Joshua, Moses, the same thing. What? The reason why Moses defeated Pharaoh, because God sent him. God, what you think Mo if Moses went down there on his own? What are you going to take with him? The herd of she heals God? I come down here to dethrone you. People, Moses would have been hanging up on one of them cross outside the city. Because that's what they did. They would kill people like that and hang them on the cross and let the buzzers pick them. And let people see them. Why? So they can feel. People, what's wrong with this season and time is all these wicked folk that wants to apply the world and the word together, and it ain't going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Any question before we close? You got that one or the other. I choose the word. I choose the kingdom of God. Whatever goes against the word, I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want nothing to do with you all that go against the word. That's why I'm going to make sure I give you the word those of you that don't want to follow the word, we have no relationship at all. Just because you're here, it don't mean a thing. Why? Because the word itself, that's what, that's why Jesus said, you know what? Let me tell you who my family is. Those of you just got offended, you ought to read Luke 8, 21. He said, my family are those that hear the word. And the reason why you got offended is because you ain't saved. You need to get saved while you got while you got breath in your body. I would, unless you just want to go to hell. All right, any question before we close? Anything anybody didn't understand? I hope you walk out the word. All right, well, we're going to.
going to have our announcements. Then we're going to let y'all go back out. And whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Just remember that the Lord knows what you're going to do. <laughs>